Good morning and welcome to Wholesome Roots. Today I'm going to teach you how I pot up my tomato plants and some tips and tricks along the way. So in my seed starting video I told you about how I start seeds and now it's time for these tomatoes to be potted up. We start our tomatoes in 128 cells trays. That way we can fit a lot higher number of seedlings on the heat mat under the light for best germination. So now that they have all germinated and they're starting to get their real leaves, their true leaves, we know that it is time to begin pulling them out of these tiny cells that dry out every day and move them up to the next stage. So we're not moving up to a much bigger size. We're using the 72 tray size because a lot of these seedlings I dropped two or three seeds in and all two or three seedlings germinated so they need to be separated out into their own cell. So this is a little bit bigger won't dry out as fast and will give them a chance to grow on their own so their roots won't intertwine. I recommend letting your tomatoes get their first set of true leaves before you begin transplanting. So that's where we are at right now and let me show you the difference between the seed leaves and the true leaves. So every seed that germinates has its own seed leaves. These long flat leaves are seed leaves or otherwise known as cotyledons. They provide the first nutrients that the plant needs. Then as the plant starts to develop they get these leaves in the center that look more like tomato leaves. So the first step is to make sure that your potting soil is adequately moist. You don't want it soaking wet but you don't want it dry and dusty or you will not be able to moisten it at the proper level after it's in the cells. So we always do this before adding it to the cells. And we're gonna go ahead and fill those up and begin the transplant. So there you go. We've filled up and we made sure we didn't miss the corners or the edges. And then we swipe off the excess and then we just Drop it on the table to tamp it down. Make sure that none of them drop down a good bit. If they did, we would top it off. And that's it. That's how you fill a tray for seeding or transplanting. So although these larger cells allow me to start more seeds at once, they do provide some hiccups. We have a lot of drying out right there in the center of the tray, so we're going to be real careful with those. But you can see here how big some of these have gotten and how there's multiple seeds in a cell and they need to be transplanted right away. So although tomato plants are very strong and very easy to transplant, you still have to be careful with them. So what we do is, let's, I'm gonna go after this row that's really thick and robust. This is green vernissage, or vernissage, not sure the pronunciation is correct there. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take the label and I'm gonna move it to the tray that I'm moving it to. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pinch on the bottom of that cell and you see the soil just pops right out and then I'm going to grab right at the base right at the soil line making sure other plants aren't woven into these two and I'm going to pinch both at the same time and gently pry them up out of the soil. I didn't water yet this morning because I didn't want them to be too wet to make it hard to come out so you can see we have two side by side. All we're gonna do is, again, grabbing from the base. You don't wanna grab from the leaves or from the top of the stem because you can crack the stem. Other seedlings are more sensitive. Tomatoes are a little more hardy. And you just very gently pull them away from each other, allowing the roots to untangle themselves. And now you have two seedlings to plant. Now, I so I don't lose track of what I'm doing, usually go ahead and pull out every plug of that variety and lay it on the tray that I'm gonna be planting it into. 
This prevents me from mixing them up with other varieties because we have over 50 different heirloom varieties we are growing. So I'm just taking them and pulling them out of the plug. So I just pinch at the bottom of the plug, pinch at the bottom of the plant, raise it up from the soil, pinch the plug again. Oh, I was pinching the wrong plug. See, that's why it didn't release easy. Pinch again, release. And lay it on the tray until I'm ready to get them all in there. So something I do is I go through and I poke my fingers in. You can use a pencil or a poker, but I just use my fingers and I poke every single cell down. Then when I come through, I just drop the roots into the hole. So I may fill up a whole tray before going back through and covering up those roots. But you want to do this quickly so that the roots don't dry out. And tomatoes should be planted as deep as you can get them. Tomatoes will be planted all the way up to the first set of leaves. This whole area below here will root. The stems root easily. You do see that there are hairs along the stems. Those are not root hairs. I've heard that often said about tomatoes that those hairs will turn into roots, but that's not actually the case. Those are trichomes, which actually produce the essential oils that tomatoes produce to repel insects from damaging them. So they are not actually root hairs, but the roots will develop all along the stem. So I just pushed the root ball down into the bottom of the tray so that the rest of the stem can root. Oops, those two got tangled. Gotta watch out for that. <laughs> so I just press it down to the bottom layer and then I'm going to fill up these cells the rest of the way with soil. And I'm not pressing hard. If I press too hard I'm going to damage the the roots and I don't want to do that so I'm just giving them a nice gentle shove and that's another reason why it's good to have your soil already moist and then I'm just coming back through and covering up that root ball and when I water this tray in I'm gonna make sure that I look for any pockets that developed and refill any soil that loosened up so, some of you may have noticed that I just buried some leaves. That is not intentional. That is the result of trying to film with one hand and demonstrate with the other. <laughs> I don't have a uh, cameraman like some YouTubers do. It's just me doing the best I can. So then I go back and I try to center them and kind of tuck the soil around them to make them a little bit more centered in the center of the pot so that the roots can have as much room as they need to expand in that cell. This is the same way you would do it if you were planting it into a pot. Just picture it on a larger scale. I probably will not get to the pot stage as we will be probably transplanting these straight into the garden once they have recovered for a couple of weeks and our frost date has passed. All right, and then when you get to your next variety, which is pink vernissage, you just do the same thing. You set your marker there and you begin your row going that way and you just continue on changing your marker when you get to a new variety. Works out pretty well this way. So once you have them in the tray, you just water them in really, really well. I'm going to drench them really good this first watering while they fight through the battle of uh, coming back to life if they have any transplant shock. Having them good and moisturized will help with that. Make sure you don't miss the corners and the edges. Those tend to be the ones that dry out the easiest. Or if you're using a heat mat in the center, <laughs> I have turned my heat mat off now due to that drying out pattern I was seeing. This, my friends, is what 540 
tomato seedlings looks like after transplanting. They are bouncing back pretty well the first day. I'm keeping them right inside the door with just enough light to keep them from going crazy without the light. Look at that. They're, so, they're standing up so well already. That was the first tray I did. So they are bouncing back. I'm going to give them a day or two in here where I can monitor them. Um, I may set them out here in my hardening off area. And then I move them to the greenhouse. It may not be big, but it's sure useful and helpful for us. So when potting up tomato seedlings, it's important to remember that these are one of the hardiest seedlings you're going to transplant. Other things might be a bit more fragile, but tomato seedlings usually bounce back within three days after transplanting. When you transplant a tomato seedling, you should keep it in the same conditions it was in for a good two or three days after transplanting and make sure that that first initial shock has worn off before you move them to a new location. We are going to be careful and keep them here in the grow room and then they're going to go out to the greenhouse after that. It's also important that you do not fertilize right away after transplanting. A plant has to reestablish its root zones and start to de develop new roots before you give them any fertilizer. They're not going to be able to use the fertilizer during this stage and it could cause more harm than good. So remember these tips and tricks. You have to have moist soil before you begin transplanting and you should always bury your tomatoes deeper than they were originally. That helps them produce more roots along the stem, not along the trichomes. Remember, trichomes are for essential oils. And then you have to make sure that you water them in really good after transplanting. I usually pretty much soak them and that then I let them dry out as they're starting to not dry out all the way, but just dry out enough that they're not too wet where there's going to be a fungus issue. Then you wait a good two or three days before moving them anywhere else. If you're in a zone where it's time to plant your tomatoes outside, remember to harden them off for a good week or two before you plant them in the ground. I have a great video on hardening off plants that you can find on my beginning garden series playlist. After you have hardened them off for two weeks and there's no chance of frost, it's time to plant them in the ground. I can't wait. Mine are a few weeks behind for my zone, so I will be planting mine later than I normally do, but they're still going to catch up and grow beautiful tomatoes in no time at all. Tomatoes can be planted as late as July where I live here in Georgia in zone 8. So we feel completely confident that we are just right on time, even if we're not on the exact calendar we planned on. I hope these tips and tricks on planting tomato seedlings and potting them up have helped you. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. And we'd be sure to get back to you on those questions. Also, if you have any further questions that you would like to discuss in more detail, feel free to post it on our Wholesome Roots Farmstead Friends Facebook group. It's a great group full of knowledgeable people and we're always there ready to answer questions. We pride ourselves here at Wholesome Roots on getting back to people and answering questions in a timely fashion. So if you haven't heard back from us after sending us a question or a message, please reach out again and ask us again. And just so you know, email is not as good of a way to get in touch with me as Facebook messaging or posting to our group is. I hope you continue to enjoy our gardening series and and if you have any suggestions for future videos you'd like to see us make for the gardening series, let us know down in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, share, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots. You want to say it too? See you next time on Wholesome Roots. Good job.